Um, I wanted to go over and talk about uh, where we were and what happened and as horrible as all of this looks now with the markets and everything, I've had a absolutely fantastic start of the year um, trading wise. And um, if we look at Bitcoin here, it, it went to our last target, which was at that 8,000 level, which was statistically high, high probability within the range. Um, it is beyond this first zone, this first target zone, uh, and it almost reached up to the 9300, which would have been, you know, that would have been truly perfect. But it kept right under there in the 92, you know, and it was a little bit too manipulated, I guess you can say. Um, but no big deal. Uh, what we have here is we, we pulled back all the way under the first target zone and uh, we pushed all the way down. Now, this has opened up probabilities and scenarios modeling that I've done that the overall market structure that I was looking for going out further in the year, six months or more, um, is right in the line. Uh, this is exactly what uh, was suggested to happen. And uh, us going all the way down to the low 7K range is also possible. Uh, but all of this fits with a longer term trajectory. And that trajectory is actually very bullish longer term. But there's a certain type of market structure that's likely to occur. And it's kind of specialized uh, for trading. And uh, But I'm set up to take advantage of it going off into the summer and so forth. I have a very good idea of what, how the market's going to um, uh, react and, and what kind of ranges are going to be created and type of trading patterns and structures that are going to come into effect because of everything that it did here. Uh, for it to go down here, uh, retrace, and then drop under it, it, it basically is filled in the story of what it's going to do six months out and further in the next year uh, in the future. So that is very good. Even though you, you see a big bloodbath and whatnot short term, uh, it doesn't really mean much. Um, right now, we're in this second high probability range. This was the first one. This was the most likely. And that was from the mid 8,500 to um, upper 9,000 range. Uh, the last one was this one that goes all the way back up to 12,000 from here, from the mid 10,000 range. That never occurred, and that was the least probabilistic um, you know, model to, to happen. Uh, the most probabilistic was this one, and now we've gone into this one with us breaking the low 8,000 range. And where we could find strong support is all the way down to the low 7,000. Uh, but short term, we're definitely oversold. We'll probably get a bounce up to here, maybe even up to here. Uh, and this would be an area that I would be looking to take profits and so forth on any buying that I do, uh, short term. Um, and there's a whole scenario of how this could trade and the ranges that could trade within, uh, going out into the summer. And I won't, um, talk about that just yet because we're going to let the craziness um, uh, happen first. As you can see, the l huge volume that we've had. These are all the panic sellers uh, that push prices down and, and gave us the great opportunity to start to buy again and just basically hold our longs and become hodlers for a while. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, nothing to really talk about there. If we go to the Dow, I had a, a great... Great trade on that, fantastic. And if I look right here, we had our buy zone down here. The first one right down there in that upper 24K area, um, just under 24, 25,000. And it ran all the way back up to the low 27,000. That is as perfect as you can get looking at that chart uh, before we hit the resistance and then pulled all the way back. Now, I, I trade futures and stocks and whatnot, and this that you see right here is this alone has made my year trading-wise. 
um, thankfully. Um, and uh, it's this is going to be a good year. Unfortunately, it's off of the coronavirus. But the last time that I had a really um, parabolic, uh, ridiculously high, you know, return year was uh, when uh, the tsunami hit Japan. Um, that was a uh, you. That was just like I could have had a, a money press. Basically, it was uh, beautiful. But anyway, so this occurred. Um, oil. Absolutely insane. Uh, it went down to 28. This is a long-term uh, support area right down here, the 28. And uh, it is just way beyond any normal, um, don't even know what to say, just incredible. I did have a trade on that earlier in the week. That was logical. All of this right here is illogical, and I am not involved anymore, luckily. Um, but... There's no way that oil prices could sustain or stay in this area. It is just uh, not possible uh, short term. So I don't know what uh, the deal is with Russia and OPEC and you know how they were able to collapse the prices down here. Are they trying to bankrupt the U.S. shale industry? That's the only thing I could see so they can pump prices back higher um, in the years to come. Won't matter because uh, electric cars, in my opinion, are, are going to take over. Uh, so good luck. You know that's a desperate attempt, in my opinion, um, uh, to attack the the U.S. Uh, fracking industry because of the fact that it's been on fire. It's just been on fire, and it's been really uh, depressing the prices uh, to Saudi Arabia and uh, Russia. And Russia is like one third of their economy is based on oil. Um, revenue uh, and uh, Saudi Arabia that's the vast majority of all of their economy so uh, the American uh, us becoming the world leaders in in oil and and so forth has been very harmful to their uh, profitability I guess you can say or sustainability and um, now with electric vehicles that's going to have some real heavy ramifications later on but right now we're at a ridiculous level. There's no way that this should be uh, under the, the $40 range. And I don't even know how to, to uh, this would just be a buy and hold if it gets down to the 28 again and uh, look for the 40s. But uh, uh, very crazy, the, the, the amounts, the, the ranges that they have here. Um, and BNB, let's go talk to, about BNB because we did hit our target. Uh, last week and now we can actually look to start buying this again if it gets back under the 16 to 14 dollar area uh, again it's going to be looking for this previous zone but getting back to this to where we started we we went in the 18 dollar range and we exited in the 21 dollar range so that was a fantastic trade that we had so we've just cleaned up um, across the board and uh, I'm going to be testing the Zignaly uh, software because we need the bot and uh, talk to Evo today and see how we're going to progress with the service and, and go from there and I'll update you guys on that. And um, so most of the week my trading is going to be reduced. There's not much to do. I'm going to focus mainly on Bitcoin and see what technical levels we you know can produce. But um, uh, not much to really do but buy and hold uh, at this point uh, until we get back up to numbers above that 8500 uh, to 8700 uh, area uh, there's not going to be much to you know I don't know how long this uh, exagger exaggeration from the coronavirus and all of that's going to occur um, but you know that's the state that we're in right now and I could focus on the the software um, which would be great for us to do um, and uh, try to get that up and running and go from there. But anyway, that's the update. That's where we are and we've done absolutely fantastic uh, and can't really be any more pleased than I am for what, you know, anything beyond this would just be absolute and pure unmitigated greed. <laughs> um, so things have worked out very well, and I'll update you guys later in the week when 
you know, get new information or uh, see where we go from there with the new software and uh, give you my, you know, tell you what's interesting or new or good about it and some of the ideas we have. Other than that, have a great week, guys, and I'll talk to you again soon.